I reached 1,000 subscribers a few weeks ago. Thank you very much, by the way, very cool. Um, and I've got some bigger videos in the works that I'm excited about. So in the meantime, I asked people on YouTube and Instagram to ask me a few questions about film so I could do a Q&A. So let's just get straight into it. Starting off strong with question number one, what's the best opening scene you've ever seen in a film? This question came from Sherd's Tube, a fantastic, highly underrated channel run by a guy talking about more obscure books in depth and with a quiet passion. Honestly, very much recommend diving into his channel if you want booktube that entertains, edifies and comforts. So thanks for the question Sam. Honestly, it's not a question I've really thought about before but then I remembered Baby Driver. I love Baby Driver. It's immediate commitment to the sound design, especially with playing with diegetic sound. That is sound and music occurring in the context of the film and which can be heard by the characters. It's made even better by making the music explicitly coordinate the characters' moves and actions. You straight away get the sense that this film is going to be fun and will take you by surprise. An altogether amazing start to a great film. Another memorable opening scene would be from Amelie. It starts quite bizarrely in mentioning the minute details of life happening at the same time in different places in the world. A small gnat lands on a road in Manon. Glasses dance on a tabletop in a restaurant on a Greek island. A man in Manhattan returning from a funeral and at the same time Amelie being conceived. The beginning of Amelie approaches setting in an interesting way and at once expresses a feeling of life being interconnected somehow, along with a sense that the real world is more magical and fantastic than what immediately meets the eye. It's a visually beautiful entrance into the film as well, which also helps convince the audience to keep watching. Question 2. Any movies you think don't deserve as much acclaim from the Film Bros Hall of Fame? Or put in another way, what universally revered movie do you dislike? Ah, probably Napoleon Dynamite. I didn't watch this film when I was a teenager when the humour would have more likely worked better for me. But also, there was a kid in my school that had Napoleon Dynamite as their whole personality and he was so annoying that the movie just got a bad rap in my eyes, which watching it didn't really solve. Another film that just didn't gel with me is Interstellar. Just couldn't get into the film. But then again, it's set in space and if there's one thing about me you should know, it's that I don't really like space and I hate the desert, which is also why I haven't watched Dune yet and really have no desire to. Question 3. Do you have letterboxed? Can I be super duper honest with you? I don't naturally have the inclination to have a letterbox. Not to say letterbox is bad, it seems like a really cool app to share film recommendations, but it's the same reason why I don't have a Goodreads account at the moment. I decide what films and books to read on the fly and then I write down my opinions in a physical notebook, so I don't really need a digital film diary. If I want to share a film review, I create a YouTube video. If I want to share a book review, I write it for Instagram. If I want to see any of these types of reviews, I go to YouTube or Instagram or maybe Reddit if I'm desperate. I just have too many social medias in my life currently and I'm really trying to focus on the ones that are most meaningful to me, the ones that I can use to make the most connections with other people. I'm also not really the type of person who likes to segment their interests onto different platforms. I prefer a place that houses all my cultural interests, which is again why my Instagram and YouTube includes books, films, art and culture all in one place. I think that's just a me issue because I think other people are completely fine with having their interests in different places. But for now, I don't think I'll have a letterbox, but I'll never say never, so who knows. Though, if you want to have more film reviews for me, then my Instagram is a good place to go. I post about books, films, art, and other cultural things of interest, including film reviews that don't become a YouTube video. So follow my Instagram for that. I'd love to see you there. Tom Hanks versus Tom Cruise versus Brad Pitt who's the best actor, biggest box office draw, and most famous. This question was from Andrew, who runs the channel Andily, a great place for all things Marvel, superhero films, and media in general. All told in a hilarious way, so another great recommendation for you there. Thanks for the great question, Andrew. Here's my thoughts. Most famous would probably be Tom Cruise, and he's probably also the biggest box office draw, if Mission Impossible and Top Gun have anything to do with it. Best actor 
actor is definitely Brad Pitt. I pretty much love him in almost everything he's done. Fight Club, Meet Joe Black, Legends of the Fall, The Big Short, Megamind, let's not forget, the first one, we do not speak of the second. Though World War Z was painfully middling, and though I liked Bullet Train, I didn't feel like it was Pitt's best work at all. As an aside, I think the biggest issue that Pitt has had in his career is that he was largely dismissed as mainly being very handsome, which is undeniably true, but which somewhat overshadowed his very real acting ability. And Tom Hanks is not on my list, sorry. I liked him in Forrest Gump and Big, but honestly, nothing entices me with his acting, and he certainly wouldn't be able able to bring in an audience to a movie on his merit alone. Not that a lot of actors can do that now in this climate. Question five. Last question. What's your unpopular opinion that can get you cancelled? I don't think this should warrant me being cancelled. Uh, I suppose you never know these days. But I personally think that the reduction of on-screen intimacy is actually a good thing. Not to say that it doesn't have its place, but a lot of films in recent memory have used intimacy in a gratuitous way that doesn't add anything to the story. Not only does it increase the chances of actual exploitation in the film industry, e.g. Audrey Plaza turning up to the studio and finding out that the self-pleasure scene was going to be real, but it also allows films to use it as a false shorthand for being artistic important. Just because your actors are naked does not mean your film is good. Also, superfluous physical intimacy means that there is less incentive to make characters with actual chemistry or make their storylines express how much a character cares about another without them having to sleep with each other to showcase that. In a romantic climate where sleeping with someone is easier than commitment, a movie that focuses on one character watching another from a distance or having other small acts of closeness like for example having one character beckon the other to sit beside them in a scene that otherwise has nothing to do with their relationship is more likely to feel more intimate to the audience than a scene with needless nudity. So yeah, those are the questions. Thanks again for getting this channel to reach a thousand subscribers and for liking my weird artsy videos. Very much appreciate it. You can answer the questions for yourself in the comment section and I'm really interested to hear what you have to say about your own experiences with Letterboxd, good and bad. Other than that, have a great day and I'll see ya.